Okay, so today we're going to learn how to make vessels, concrete vessels, cement vessels. Now there's many different molds that you can choose from. I've got a few laid out here that we use. Um, there's even more that you can actually choose from. But today what we're going to do is we're going to use this particular mold here. And I really like this mold. It creates a nice little, I guess you would call it a hexagon type shape. And we're going to go ahead and use this mold. I'll leave a link in the description below to all the different molds that I've just shown you there uh, that you can go purchase them if you want to. Now one thing you should keep in mind is always wear a glove or gloves when handling cement. And the other thing is it's nice to wear some sort of mask as well. Okay, because it does create a form of dust. So I'm going to go ahead and put my mask on so it may mute my sound a little bit. <laughs> and then put my glove on. Now we have our measurements down to the way we like the consistency of the cement when we pour. So I'm just going to use a, a red cup here just to do it. And I'm going to go ahead and put it on to here. And then go ahead and turn my weight on so that it zeroes it out to the cup. Now the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and add some cement. Now I know that with this particular mold, I need 350 grams of cement and 60 grams of water. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put my water in first. I need 60 grams of water. There we go. Now I'm going to zero it out and I'm going to add my 350 grams of cement. Now I'm going to put a picture on the screen right now of the cement that we use but because uh, we found this to be the best cement uh, around. So there's a picture of the cement we use. Now I'm just going to go ahead and add my 350 grams of cement. You can see the dust. See the dust? Maybe you can, maybe you can on the camera, but it creates a dust. That's why we put a mask on. Of course you can cover yourself with a shirt or whatever the case may be, you don't have to run out and buy a mask if you're doing this just for your own personal use. Now you can use these vessels for anything. We use them for a candle, but you can use them as planters. You can use them as, you know, pencil holders, paper clip holders, whatever the case may be. There's our 350 grams of cement. Now when it comes to coloring, okay, you can do this a couple of different ways. One way is you can buy this particular color here. Uh, of course, this is a gray, but you can buy any color you want. And I'll leave a link, a link below in the description to this particular paint set. Okay, so you can use this. But if you use this, it sucks up the water in the cement quite a lot. So you'd have to use more than 60 grams of water. Okay, but here's what we choose to use. We use a company called Direct Colors. And you can get to their website at directcolors.com and we buy their pigments. Okay, so I'm going to make this one blue. Let's pull this out of the way. And I use a quarter teaspoon spoon. Okay, and so I'll go ahead and open this up. And I dip in here and shake it off until I get it. I get it even. Okay. Let me hold that up there and make sure you get it. So I get it even with it. And then I just put it in there. Okay. So there's our blue. Go ahead and set this back over here. Now, here's a little trick for you. A lot of people will use a spoon or a stirring stick or something like that. If you have a drill, get your drill and get your beater, get a beater mixture that goes like cake batter beater or you could just use the beater itself because it should turn fast enough to, to make it spin but with the drill and the beater on the end of it you can you can mix it so here's what we're going to do, we're going to start mixing it 
Now you'll notice I mixed for about 30 seconds or so, 45 seconds, but this is the consistency you want. See how it's just kind of dripping off of the beater? That's the kind of consistency you want. That's why we have our measurements down to a science here. Uh, because this helps you with the least amount of air bubbles uh, in your in your vessels. And then of course I just run this over here. Let me see if I can move the camera here to show you what I'm talking about. I just have some water sitting over here. And I just turn it with some water and then I reverse the drill. Turn it with some water again. And then I go ahead and release it into the water and let it just sit there until I'm ready to clean it off. So now, let's take this over here. Now I have a, a vibrating table here. But if you're doing this as a DIY, DIY, do it yourself, yeah, DIY, <laughs> you're not going to have this. So I'm going to show you what it looks like without having this, what you need to do. So I'm going to take the cement and I'm going to pour it slowly into the mold so that it creates as little air bubbles as possible in the bottom and once I get it about half full I will go ahead and drop it on the table a few times and then squish it and turn it around so I'm, I'm actually rotating the mold as I'm squishing it and then I pour the rest in and you still want to pour slow you never want to pour it fast. Now, you'll notice that I'm not coming all the way up to the top. That's where I'm going to, right there. Okay, you want to do that so that you don't have to sand a lot. Now, you'll notice that air bubbles start coming out as I start doing this right here. As I start jiggling it on the sides. And you want to come from the bottom up too. Okay. And then what I like to do is let it set for just a few seconds. And then I will. So I've got some other, some more cement in this. So I'm just going to pour it into one of these molds here. And now the little bit of cement that's left is hardly nothing, really. In this mold here, I'm going to just shake it out. See that big air bubble come out? You see that? See, that's what you want to do, is you want to make sure that there's no air bubbles in the bottom. And these air bubbles, you can just pop them with your finger. Now I gotta tell you, these little molds here, they'll be in the description below. You gotta be careful with them because they will get out of shape and your hole will be oblong instead of round. This, this mold creates this particular shape here, by the way. Okay, here's another one here. Here's one with no color in it. That's what this mold creates. All right, so we've got that down. Now that we've got this over here and we've had it set for a little bit longer, let me go ahead and see if I can zoom in here a little bit. I, cameraman, I am not. Candle maker, I am. <laughs> now that it's set here for a few seconds, probably a minute, I guess, now I'm just gonna tap on the sides and try to make it fold over. Now it's okay that it has that little streaks of blue. That's only on the bottom of it. The actual uh, 
vessel itself will be all solid blue. These streaks will only end up on the bottom and that doesn't really matter. And you can see the air bubbles still coming up. So as long as we can still see air bubbles coming up, then we want to just be sure that we tap it a little more. What happens is, is in these molds here, they have a lip. I don't know if you can see that lip. I'm trying to get it in the camera here. They have a lip underneath them. Okay? And air will get trapped underneath this lip. These two molds here have that same lip. Okay? So what we're trying to do is, is make it release the air from underneath this lip up to the top. And the best way I've found to do that is just to tap it and it almost looks like it's folding over itself. The, the concrete, see how it kind of looks? I don't know if you can catch that or not, but it looks like it's folding over itself. And that's the best way to know that you've gotten all the air bubbles. See, see how that threw that over? That's what you want. Now we'll just let this sit here and harden. And I like to let mine sit for a few hours. The cement itself tells you 15 to 20 minutes, but I still like to let it sit for a few hours um, just to be on the safe side. And you can see I just got some more air bubbles out of it just by touching it. You're not always going to get 100% of them out, but the more you work with it, the more you're going to get out the smoother surface you're going to get okay so it just depends and like I say I've got a vibrating table here because we do these for Doveport as Doveport candles not for Doveport candles we are Doveport candles but see I can vibrate them out you'll see the air bubbles as they see see how they're starting to pop up and come out of here so that's that's how we get ours out okay we vibrate them right out and even that doesn't get 100% of the air bubbles out. And you can tell that because this was vibrated on it. And you can see if I could get it in the camera here. Uh, let's see, zoom back out some. Sorry about this, folks. I, there we go. You can see here that this one has a little air bubble on the top of it that didn't. And that's that's actually the bottom down here of the mold. Um, if you're If you're actually looking at the mold, this part here is actually this bottom down here so there was some air left trapped in it but we do our best to get all the air bubbles out and uh, go that route so what I'll do is we'll let this harden and to save you some time from having to sit here and watch this video for two hours with nothing happening I'm gonna cut it off and we'll come back so for you it'll blink of, be a blink of an eye for me it'll be a couple hours and we'll take a look and see what this mold and this mold looks like okay before we come back to the molds uh, I, I meant to tell you that when you're cleaning this you need to clean it right away uh, this cement will harden underwater so just leaving this in water doesn't mean that the cement will stay soft so you need to get your batter, uh, beater out and go ahead and clean every nook and cranny of it and even use a toothbrush if you need to to get everything out of it or else you'll mix you'll stand the risk of mixing colors down the line and I can tell you that if you're using like black and blue and red uh, dyes pigments uh, they will overpower anything that's lighter like yellows and greens and things like that so just wanted to show you that real quick that you do want to clean these beaters as quick as possible and so and now we'll be back in, in just a few minutes well a blink of an eye for you two hours for me and we'll take a look at these two molds okay so now we're back and it's been about two and a half hours um, one way you can tell if your molds are ready is by touching the top of them if they're cool on the top then they're ready to demold uh, if they're still warm then leave them to set and also you can leave them setting for longer than the two and a half hours that I've left mine setting so let's go ahead and, and demold this one so what we'll do is we separate the mold from around the concrete just like so and then we just want to roll the mold down 
and then hold it with this hand and then roll over here while still holding it and then get it to this way right here and then all you do is just push just push and it comes out like that and then you want to twist to get the center out and that's how you demold it and as you can see here we done very good by not getting any air bubbles in it okay and then the bottom part you just can sand off that's what I, I do with them is I just take some sandpaper and just sand them off and then I put uh, shellac over it okay and I'll show you the shellac that I use in just a second uh, and then that kind of um, seals it up and gets it ready for uh, any candle wax so let's go ahead and take a look at the sanding process and then uh, the type of shellac that I would use on it I almost forgot to demold this one for you so with this one here you just pull it around push it up with your fingers on the bottom and then just twist it out as well and as you can see on this one here it did get let's see if I can get it up to the camera here let it focus it did get an air bubble there but it looks pretty good otherwise and it does have some they will have some uh, a little bit sticking out on them that just kind of breaks off you can just kind of wipe that off with your fingers and then sand sand it a little bit as well so let's go to our sanding room and uh, finishing room and take care of this and this mold here now when you polyurethane these after you've sanded them uh, which I haven't done yet I'm going to show you in just a second you want to let these set for at least a day before you polyurethane them but the longer you let them set uh, the better off you are because there's still moisture inside of this and we need that moisture to escape as much as possible now one option is is you could make a bunch of them and stick them in your oven at about 150 degrees for I don't know 30 minutes or an hour I've never done that so you'd have to test it on your own but uh, I just kind of let them sit as you can see we've got all these set in here that are drying out these have been here for a few days and then we go ahead and shellac them and when I shellac them I'm saying shellac it's actually polyurethane this is what I use um, to put on them this is the this is a water-based polyurethane it's triple thick now the company that we use uh, that we get our colors from directcolors.com does make an acrylic sealer okay and uh, I do have this bottle here they sent me as a sample so thank you directcolors.com um, and it's it's really good I just haven't bought any because I've still got a bunch of the uh, triple thick polyurethane uh, water base that I use okay and I got this at the uh, depot store you know what I'm talking about um, but uh, yeah so either one of these would work or any type of water base just make sure it's water based okay it's polyurethane it's water based but I do like the triple thick myself and then I just use these little brushes we buy them on uh, Amazon I'll leave a link in the description below about the little brushes uh, you can wash them out uh, and reuse them over and over again or you can just toss them uh, because we buy them by the by the hundreds and uh, so we'll we'll do a bunch at one time and then toss it and then just use a brand new one uh, the next time so let's go ahead and sand the two vessels that we just made okay so sorry to have you looking into my garbage can here but I like to do it uh, over a garbage can and basically I just use like 300 grit sandpaper uh, on a sanding block and just take the bottom of it and as you can see here how the bottom looks right now it's got a little ridge on it so let's just go ahead and sand that off so I just go in a circular motion of course you want to blow all that off and now you can see let's see here if I can get it in the camera now you can see that ridge is almost gone it's still a little bit right here so I'll just go back and forth just put pressure on that one side 
and there we have it. We have a completely sanded uh, vessel now that is ready to polyurethane once it dries. And these little ones here, I just kind of uh, put them on the sander just a little bit, just in a circular motion real quick. And then that just kind of knocks it down. And sometimes what I'll do too is, is they'll have little edges on them here like this. And I'll just take the edge. And what I do with it is I just kind of put it at an angle like that. And I just run it around each edge like so. And that just kind of takes the edge off of it as well. Like that. And you definitely want to make sure they're cleaned off uh, by the time you... Um, slack these or put the polyurethane on them okay so i'm going to let these sit here and they're going to dry for a day and then or two and then i'll put the slack on them or i keep calling it slack but it's polyurethane i'll put the polyurethane on it but i'm going to show you one that i put the polyurethane on when it's ready over here okay okay sorry for my mess here but what i have is, is basically i've got cardboard laid down and i've got a little drying rack uh here um this is just like you would dry you know biscuits or bread or something like that on so I've got my little opener here. Um, this is actually just a shelf holder <laughs> that holds up a shelf. But it actually works good to open up the polyurethane. So I just go around it real quick. Open up the polyurethane. And now I am ready to polyurethane this, this one here which is ready. So what I do is I hold it on the inside and I'm sorry I keep getting out of camera angle here. I'm doing the camera and the work at the same time. So, And then I'll just go ahead and dip this in the polyurethane and just start on the bottom. And I'll just go ahead and do the bottom real good. Now one thing you'll notice is your color is going to turn dark. Okay? Your color is going to turn dark as you do this. So I'll get some more polyurethane on here. And you might hear my doggy squeaking its toy in the background. So you just gotta put a good coat on it. Just paint it all the way around. And I'll go ahead and speed up the camera so that you don't have to sit here and endure uh, me painting this. Now you wanna be careful when you're doing ones like this uh, because your polyurethane will collect in those little divots. So you definitely want to be sure you go over each little divot where you might see some extra polyurethane. It will dry clear, but it'll still be noticeable to the uh, to you or your customer or whoever it may be. Now you'll notice that this is turning, it turned a darker blue, but as it dries, it'll lighten back up again. Now you might be wondering to yourself, how do I get the inside? Well, this is where the drying rack comes in place. I put it down on the drying rack. I get some more polyurethane on my brush. And I just go to the inside and I do the bottom and then I just paint up the inside. Now the inside polyurethane is more important if you're doing a candle to have a couple of coats on. So once this is dry, and usually it only takes about 20 minutes from polyurethane to completely dry, then I go ahead and put another coat on it. Now as far as the top goes, I just take my brush whatever's left in it, just push it out and then I try to stay in the same motion because you can get lines in your polyurethane and that's normal you'll see little lines where you've painted it and that's normal so on the top I just try to stay in the same way that, in other words I'm not doing this and this and this and this and this like that I, I, I come down and I stay that same direction all the way around. Then you want to make sure that nothing got over the edge just by going over the edge here and then on the inside around the edge like that and now you have it completely polyurethane. Now we'll just wait on it to dry in the center or in the inside add one more coat to it and it's ready to fill with wax or put your pencils in or your pens or whatever you're going to use it for. A plant, whatever you're going to use it for it'll be ready for it. So and here's one that's already polyurethane right here and completely dry it's got its two coats in it and it is ready to go and that folks is how you make a cement vessel thanks for watching 
be sure to like and subscribe uh, our videos for more helpful tips and tricks on our videos as we post them and if you want to purchase any of our candles you can do so in the links below um, and uh, you'll see links down there to our website and our Etsy store and you can go to either one and purchase candles. We also have one of a kind candles as well so you can get one of those as well. So again I'm Randy and uh, thanks for watching.